coming up. He was found so far from his car. So it's hard to say suicide when the car and no weapon, no gun, no knife, nothing was found near his remains. For Vault Studios, I'm Reed Redmond. You're listening to The Daily Crime. We give thanks tomorrow for many blessings, but for one Texas family, Thanksgiving is a stark reminder of one empty seat at their table. The night before Thanksgiving in 2016, Thomas Brown, a high school senior from the rural town of Canadian Texas, went missing. His body was found two years later, but multiple investigations haven't been able to determine how he died. The story of what happened to him reads like a choose-your-own-ending book, and all the outcomes and in tragedy. Joining us to discuss this case is Nicole Kahn, an investigative reporter with Ken's Five in Texas. Nicole, this is a case I know has been getting a lot of attention. There are a range of theories out there as to, to what could have happened, but let's start by going back to the beginning. This started as a missing persons case back in November of 2016. What were the circumstances surrounding Thomas Brown's apparent disappearance? Thomas went missing on Thanksgiving Eve. So he was a high school senior, and a lot of his friends who had graduated the year before had come back to the small town of Canadian for the holidays. So he was out with friends that evening, visiting with them, and then never came home that night. Before we talk a little bit more about what happens from there, can you tell us a little bit more about Thomas Brown? What have you been able to learn about him? Thomas was extremely popular. He was on the state championship football team. He was class president. He was also involved in the drama club. But Thomas was also that person who got along with and accepted everyone. He didn't just run around with a popular crowd. He was always the person, I was told, who would reach out to the less popular kids as well, and be friends with them. And so many people have told me what a wonderful heart that Thomas had and how they so appreciated his friendship. So in 2016, Thomas goes missing, and we start to hear all of these different theories, everything from the possibility that he could have taken his own life to him running away of his own volition to him being killed. And there are a handful of discoveries within the first couple of years after his disappearance that seemingly offer some clues as to what might have happened. Can you take us through some of the more significant discoveries during that window of time? What happened is Thomas's car was found that next day because one of his friend's fathers took up a helicopter. So they located his car. And then as the investigation went on, they started finding his backpack his phone, things of that nature, sort of on the outskirts of Canadian. And the strange thing about his cell phone is when they found it several years after he went missing, it was an iPhone and it was in pristine condition, even though the area had been mowed, even though it had been a really cold winter. But when they went to see what information was able to be gathered from his phone. It was very little. They did say they found a search for the suicide hotline, but other than that, very little information was recovered from his phone. Then it's in early 2019. There's a tragic discovery that turns this investigation on its head. Take us through that discovery. It turns out that one of the sheriff's deputies was out searching for deer horns, and he happened to find Thomas Brown's remains while he was doing that. Thomas was found out on Lake Marvin Road, which is a wilderness area right outside of Canadian, where Thomas is from. And his body was found about 10 miles from where his car was found. And then in between his body and the car were all of his personal items, such as his backpack, his phone that had been discovered before they found his remains. At that point, when Thomas Brown's body is discovered, what do we learn about how he died? I know we don't necessarily know the manner of death still to this day, but but do we know the cause of death? So that's still a mystery. Only about 30% of Thomas's remains were found because he was out in the elements for about two years. So 
it was very difficult for the medical examiner to determine during the autopsy how Thomas had died. We do know now, though, that part of his face was crushed, but there's no way to tell if that was done while he was alive and he died from those injuries or it happened after he had died. And of course, you mentioned that the car was not discovered in the, the exact same location as as where the body was discovered. That suggests that someone would have driven the car away from there, right? It's definitely possible. There's so many theories as to his cause of death, whether that be homicide, suicide, natural causes, or possibly an accidental death. But what really adds to these theories mystery is that he was found so far from his car. So it's hard to say suicide when the car and no sort of weapon, no gun, no knife, nothing was found near his remains. Eventually, we end up with two investigations into this case. There's an official investigation and one conducted by a private investigator hired by the family Tell us a little bit about these two different investigations and what each has turned up over the past two, three years now. There are actually more than just two investigations. The Hemphill County Sheriff's Department did investigate Thomas's missing persons case and then his death investigation. In 2018, though, the Sheriff's Department handed over the investigation to the Texas Attorney General and they took over. And they involved the Texas Rangers, potentially the FBI and some other agencies as well. And of course, the private investigator the family hired shortly after Thomas went missing. And we're never probably going to see all of the evidence these different investigations uncovered because technically Thomas's case is still open. But there was so much conflicting evidence from what the different agencies have released. The investigator supposedly went and luminaled Thomas's car about a year after he went missing and found what he considers a lot of blood. Yet the attorney general has recently come back and said that that luminol test was not done correctly and that it was paint, not blood, that was in Thomas's car. So it's really difficult to have any consensus about exactly what happened to Thomas that night. You mentioned we might never see all of the evidence that's been collected in this case, or at least while it's still an open case, but the Attorney General's office has released over 200 pages of evidence. And those documents do show that they've investigated multiple members of law enforcement, as well as some family members. What did we learn about that from those records? And it's important to say here that while they did release a lot of evidence, it's not the totality of the evidence. What documents showed that they released was they did investigate the Hemphill County Sheriff's Department, the sheriff, and one of the deputies. That's because an investigation by TCOL, which is the agency that oversees law enforcement in Texas, found that the sheriff was forging training documents. And part of that investigation also revealed that it was possible that some documents in Thomas's case were also either forged or done after the fact, possibly some video from the gas station where he was last seen at went missing or was thrown away. So it was shown, though, that the sheriff was not involved. It was also shown that the deputy who found Thomas's remains also not involved in his disappearance or death. The attorney general's office, of course, looked at his family, his mom and his stepfather. They were given polygraph tests, and it shows that there was some deception on some questions regarding the polygraph tests, such as what happened to Thomas's phone and whether or not they had potentially moved the body. But we need to keep in mind that nobody has ever been charged with anything in Thomas's case, whether it was law enforcement or his family. The private investigator hired by the family held a town hall just a couple months ago to share some updates with the community. What did we learn through that, that town hall, if anything? The private investigator took the public step by step through the timeline that we know of for Thomas. 
and then also dropped a bombshell about there potentially being a high school football gambling ring in the town of Canadian where people bet on games and they had involved a former football player who they either, you know, said, we want you to win this game or we want you to throw this game. And this football player who is now in prison for a different charge has told investigators that he did see Thomas Brown alive on the Friday after Thanksgiving. He was taken by law enforcement, he says, to a location where Thomas was tied up to a chair and told he needed to throw the football game after Thanksgiving. And he said Thomas for sure was alive then, and that was the last time he saw them. But we never really got any insight as to how this gambling ring might be involved in Thomas's disappearance and death. And of course, law enforcement has been cleared from any charges in Thomas's disappearance and death. So we don't really know. Is it true that there's a gambling ring? I don't care. Is it true that they violated UIL rules from head to toe that could take away state championships? Yeah, probably, but I don't care. I want to know what the happened to Thomas. All of us do. Has law enforcement commented at all on that that theory, or I don't know if we would even call it a theory, that, that information that we heard from the private investigator? We have not heard from law enforcement. The attorney general's office has released their 249 pages of evidence and is not commenting anymore on Thomas's case. Technically, it's still an open investigation. And the Hemphill County Sheriff's Office is technically also still investigating Thomas's death but they're no longer the lead investigator on this case. It's the attorney general's office. And I understand the attorney general's office to this point has said there isn't sufficient evidence to determine how Thomas Brown died. So they're not, they're not necessarily calling this a homicide. They're not, they're not clarifying that. Has the private investigator shared what he thinks on that front if this is a homicide case? Private investigators always said this is a homicide case. He thinks it's potentially an accidental death. His theory that he's put out to the media before is that Thomas went to the gas station, ran into some friends, and went over towards the football field in Canadian because that's the last place his phone pinged from. So it's possible that it was a somebody he knew or more than one person he knew was goofing off, accidentally shot him in the back of the head, and then went ahead and moved the body, drove the car 10 miles away, left it at the sewage treatment plant, and then walked home. Now we know his head was smushed in. How bad? Was it bad enough to kill him? Maybe his head was smushed in first, and then they shot him in the back of the head because he was still alive. I don't know. You come up with your theory. It's now been five years since that Thanksgiving when Thomas Brown went missing. Have we heard much from the family during that time? How are they remembering Thomas now five years later? His family has always been wanting to keep Thomas's memory alive and making sure that people know his story and in hopes of getting answers. They've also started an educational fund to help other seniors from the town of Canadian go to college because Thomas never had that chance. So each year they give scholarships to help with school expenses. And often they'll hold memorial services for Thomas. Of course, Thomas's remains are in a lab in Texas because his case is still technically open. So they haven't been able to bury him. So there's no memorial or marker or any physical way at this point to remember him. Five years is a long time. I hope we'll get some answers soon. There are more layers to this story. For anyone hoping to learn more, you can find all of Nicole Kahn's reporting at kens5.com. Nicole Kahn, thanks for sharing the story. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Daily Crime. We're right here with a new one every day of the week, Monday through Friday. So make sure you're subscribed to or following the show on your preferred podcast app, or you can also find us on YouTube. If you're looking for more podcasts, you can head over to vaultstudios.com for a full list of our shows. That'll do it for this one. Until next time, for Vault Studios, I'm Reed Redmond.